Andre, you've been a cosmologist for more than three decades, beginning in the old Soviet Union under difficult circumstances. Uh, one of the creators of inflation theory, which has revolutionized our thinking in cosmology, uh, pioneering new ways of thinking about it uh, as we speak. Uh, when you take a step back and look at the last 30 years of, of cosmology and human understanding, uh, what, what, is it, what do you feel like? What does it make you, what are, you what, what, are, what are the things that are most important? Well, uh, huh. uh, it's a tough question because there are several different things that happened during the last 30 years which have completely fascinated me. Uh, one of them, for example, this discovery of uh, energy of vacuum that our universe is accelerating. The expansion is, is accelerating. Yes, uh, yeah, and that was completely unexpected. Another thing is that experimentally, I really never really believed <laughs> that they will come close to experimental verification of inflation uh, from the point of view of these perturbations generated during inflation. Uh, this uh, Kobe satellite, WMAP satellite. So you, uh, those was, years you were working on theory through yeah. the early 80s, uh, you really had no hope that, that, that you could really... Well, we, we, we always have some hope, <laughs> but I guess my attitude was that the theory from my perspective, and it, it's, I mean, it, it's not very modest, uh, but <laughs> it's it just how it is. From my perspective, the theory was so simple and beautiful that it would be really painful and unbelievable <laughs> that it is wrong. And that is why I personally did not quite much care about uh, experimental verification of it. On the other hand, <laughs> with years, I guess I became maybe a little bit uh, <laughs> wiser, I don't know, and I start caring. So I look at what these people are finding right now. This is completely amazing. And this development of technology, this is unprecedented. And you never underestimate your friends experimentalists. They are so inventive, they are so great. Okay, so I started caring very, very seriously about these things. Um, what else is interesting for me about this? Well, look at the universe from this cosmic perspective. Uh, it's almost 14 billion years old. Uh, I mean, if I'm believing uh, uh, eternal inflation, which I do, then this just means that 14 billion years or 13.7 billion years after the end of inflation in my local part of the universe, okay? So these 14 billion years, we were waiting to watch the universe at this magic scale encompassing all of what we can see right now with all of our best telescopes. So these true investigation of cosmology on this scale started, well, less than a century ago. Yeah. So just think about this like that. We are going to see everything that it is there to see about the universe within maybe next uh, 30 years, 50 years. We started doing it maybe 100 or seriously 50 or precisely 30 okay. or more precisely 10 years okay. ago. So all of this is just this minuscule fraction of time. Time less than a century from start to the end. Now, this, compare this to these 14 billion years. So the universe waited for 14 billion years to be observed. And, and, and is observed and now, in that and short... And now her desire is finally fulfilled. We see her in all of her beauty. And next billion years... We are not going to see anything more because this is just speed of light multiplied by the age of the universe. Can't get more. So we need to wait another this 14 billion years to double our horizon. So we are living right now in a very special time. This is just divide 100 years, but 14 billion years of the existence of the universe. What is the probability that we would be born in the time where cosmology would be so exciting? <laughs> and this just makes it even more exciting because we live at this special time. On the other hand, my personal attitude to it is maybe different from the uh, perspective of many other cosmologists. 
because, well, you know, physicists, they study things just for the benefit of uh, studying the things, because they are so interesting how the world works. Mm -hmm. uh, I am looking at the universe sometimes also with this perspective, but sometimes with a different perspective. The universe is our cosmic home. And if I want to know something about our self, okay, so it's kind of anthropic principle backwards, okay, yeah. I want to uh, understand something about our self, something about our life, our death, okay, I'm looking at our universe at our, as our home. When you go to the home of your friend, you look around and you know something about him which you did not know before. When you're looking at our universe, maybe it will provide us some cosmic perspective which will tell us eventually something more about us. It's a fascinating comment. When I go to a friend's house, especially if I've never been there before, if I'd go to your house, mm -hmm. first thing I would do would be look at your books. I always like to go into the living room and just, just see what the books sure. that somebody has, not just, just in the science areas, but the literature and the art or politics, whatever. I wander that way. My wife gets aggravated. She says I'm being impolite or something. But I wander and see people. I get to know them by their books. Yeah. <laughs> and one, one of the strange things which we are studying right now, this problem of cosmological singularity. The whole universe is supposed to emerge from nothing, from this point before which there was nothing at all. Now, however, we study this with the methods of quantum cosmology, which were unavailable before. We use our knowledge of inflationary cosmology, which was unavailable before. We use right now the methods of string theory, which was a different method. Who knows, maybe space-time is not fundamental. Maybe our treatment of this initial singularity was not correct. Some people consider the possibility that our universe emerged from something which was before. Mm. And maybe our methods of study this something is, uh, are not quite adequate, but we at least we started asking this question. The question which was previously was impossible to ask, not looking stupid, okay? So then look at us. We are emerging from what? From nothing, we are born and then we are dying. What was with us before? What is going to happen with us later? Maybe study of cosmology will not tell us anything new about it. Maybe, however, you know, parallels sometimes can teach us something. Maybe by learning something about death and the birth of the universe, maybe we can learn something about myself and ourselves. And this I consider one of the most interesting, well, speculative consequences of study of cosmology.